Thanks for joining us today and welcome. I'm excited to take you today deep into the Rocky Mountains where we'll find the lush and fruitful San Luis Valley, home to a small city of Alamoza, which is an agricultural hub in southwestern Colorado. This area is home to some of the best stargazing on the planet. The views are so spectacular that Alamosa has taken measures to protect its view of the cosmos by becoming a dark sky city, which is a series of measures taken by the community to limit the amount of light pollution that is emitted from the city. This makes for a dark city at night with vivid views of the stars above. This was a fact I was unaware of when I arrived in Alamosa late one evening. I had hoped to find a grocery store before I made my way to the local hotel, but, I thought they were all closed due to the lack of exterior lighting. Fortunately, I noticed some people were flowing in and out of a local store, despite there being no parking lot lights or exterior lights, outside of a few downward facing lamps on the side of the building. It left me with an eerie feeling, but fortunately the local store clerk explained to me how a dark sky city works. Once explained, I was enthusiastic about the idea, despite the dark alleys and shady parking lots. I came to the San Luis Valley to visit the otherworldly Great Sand Dunes National Park, which was amazing and lived up to all the hype. However, I found myself captivated by the locals' enthusiasm for stargazing and UFO spotting. After all, the San Luis Valley is the highest alpine valley on the planet, and depending who you're asking, it's a prime spot for witnessing paranormal activities such as UFOs, mystic portals, and other strange occurrences. Much of the sightings surround a remote section of Highway 17, or as the locals refer to it, the Cosmic Highway. And in case this fact was lost on you, it's hard to miss the little green men signs that dot the roadway and make you aware of the coming attraction. Whether you're an avid believer in visitors from other worlds or an avid skeptic, it doesn't change the fact that there's been a lot of strange things reported in the San Luis Valley. These happenings and sightings stretch from southwestern Colorado to northern New Mexico, and the stories date back to the Spanish conquistadors' expeditions into the area. Some call the San Luis Valley the Bermuda Triangle of the West. The sprawling expanses west of the Great Sand Dunes and its preserved lands are interrupted only by Highway 17. This vast emptiness, scored only by a roadway, has numerous sightings, ranging from strange lights to otherworldly aircrafts. The sheer amounts of reports is notable, regardless of what side of the UFO debate you're on. If you were to follow Highway 17 North, just outside of Alamosa, you'll find a small bird called Hooper, which is home to arguably the most unique roadside attraction in Colorado, the UFO Watchtower. This attraction invites curious minds and extraterrestrial seekers for a chance to spot a UFO or an alien. Allegedly, this location is a frequent host to numerous UFO sightings, which is likely thanks to Alamosa's vast and unfiltered view of the night sky. The UFO watchtower in Hooper consists of a brick dome and a 10-foot high metal rafter, which is flanked by a gigantic alien-themed folk art which consists of thousands of trinkets that have been left by visitors over the years. There's only one rule for placing an item. It must be an item that has a use or significance to you. The art piece sits on what is believed to be a portal to another dimension. Admittedly, we're getting into somewhat hokey territory, but would you expect any less from a good old fashioned roadside attraction? The proprietor of the watchtower, Judy Mezzaline, tried her hand at cattle ranching with little success, saying, I struggled with cows for four and a half years because they don't eat sand very well, and she had to sell her herd. A local farmer suggested that Judy build a UFO watchtower to better spot the otherworldly craft that regularly flew over the area. Admittedly, Judy opened the UFO watchtower as a joke, after moving to the valley over two decades ago and hearing the strange stories from her neighbors. However, after experiencing over 30 encounters herself, the watchtower has taken on renewed purpose, one that is much more serious than a mere roadside attraction or entertainment. She's crafted a place where people can gather, mingle, camp, and a place where they generally don't get made fun of for talking about these types of things. For more than 20 years and over 30,000 visitors later, the UFO Watchtower has evolved far past its original roots. 
It's a place where people of all walks of life are comfortable sharing experiences that would be considered unbelievable anywhere else. The UFO Watchtower exists to affirm believers and entertain and amuse everyone else. It's a perfect blend of roadside attraction and a like-minded gathering place. Though, Judy still tries to keep her sense of humor. For example, providing a separate guest sign-in book for extraterrestrials, and several visitors have claimed to have been aliens. I was fortunate to be one of the first visitors since the Watchtower reopened after the pandemic showed improvement. During my conversation with Judy, she expressed concerns about being able to stay open and sustain after the closure. However, this was the quiet before the storm, as the Watchtower became very busy with post-pandemic travelers. An added boost in notoriety came from people who during the lockdown found an old 2013 Vice News article that featured Judy and her attraction. The re-emergence of this article, coupled with pent-up travel, has made for a banner year for the attraction. Since opening in 2000, there have been 231 reports of visitors from other worlds, 30 of which Judy witnessed firsthand, meaning she averages seeing one sighting each year since moving here in 1995. Judy described one such sighting that she saw in 2017, saying, The closest one was between here and the mountains. It was narrow and long and zipped across the sky. We had over a dozen people here who saw it. This is just one of the countless sightings that have accumulated, some of which Judy documents on her website, which is ridiculously outdated, but it comes with a certain late 90s charm that I hope it never loses. The website also goes into detail about what I referred to earlier as folk art. However, Judy and a group of psychics think it's much more than art and refer to it as the healing garden. Numerous psychics have affirmed a belief that two beings reside in the garden and exist to protect a series of spinning vortexes. Admittedly, I have no clue what that means, but if nothing else, it's fascinating folklore. Because of the spinning vortexes, Judy requests that people leave something behind to receive good energy from the vortexes and the beings below them. Again, the item cannot just be a random piece of garbage. It must be an item that has meaning to you or is useful. As a casual visitor, the Healing Garden offers you a feast for the eyes, ranging from the mundane, such as pens, lighters, Altoid containers, to wildly creative items, toys, photos, and thoughtful mementos. I spent over an hour exploring the maze to find the right place to put a memento of my own. Judy explained that many of the larger items were donated by enthusiasts and locals, such as the satellite dishes or statues. Although she did not mention it during our conversation, her website has a list of requested items. The list includes the expected items, chairs, picnic tables, or playground equipment, and is packed with unexpected and somewhat humorous items like moon rocks, lasers, and jetpacks. Eventually, I made my way to the dome of the watchtower, which acts as a mini museum slash gift shop, where you can pick up a copy of Judy's book, The Crazy Lady Down the Road, or more casual souvenirs like alien googly eyes. She's happy to guide visitors through a plethora of binders, photos, and documents that Judy has collected over the years. I could have spent hours pouring through the handwritten accounts, photos, and news cuttings. I came to the UFO Watchtower on a LARP. I left surprised just how much fun it was, and I appreciated the roadside attraction that Judy Mezzaline has crafted over the past 21 years. If you find yourself in the San Luis Valley, I highly encourage you to visit the UFO Watchtower. You can visit from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admissions is $5 per car or $2 per person, and you can camp for only $15 per tent. That's a really good deal for Colorado. Places like this are becoming rarer and rarer as the roadside attractions of the past close one by one. Help keep this attraction open and enjoy a stay at the UFO Watchtower. I really appreciate you spending some time with us today and please take a moment more to like, comment, and subscribe.